Hello there Reason users, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to look at the new authentication method that's been provided with Reason 12.6. There's been a few little changes and to be honest, I think they're actually very good changes and they're very seamless as well. So what you've just probably been witnessing in the background is I've just started up Reason and stopped it and you see me start up Reason again. But there was a big, big difference between the two. One was actually using internet authorization and one was actually using local authorization. I don't really want to call it local authorization. That's what we used to call it. It's without internet connection. Um, previously, we could authorize a local PC. Um, it didn't matter if it was on the internet or not. It would actually when you went to start Reason, it authorized itself from the local PC and off it went. Now, when you log in, if you've got internet connection, it will use the internet to authenticate you. If you don't have internet connection, then it's going to actually be able to authenticate you offline. Let's have a quick look at the preference page here. And I should be able to get this uh, zoomed in as well. So here we go. So it has changed subtly. As you can now see under preferences, we have an account. In this page, you cannot tell if you've logged in using um, internet or authorization, except for maybe the date and the time. And more importantly, probably the time. Uh, the date you see here is 30 days into the future. So now when I've logged in for the first time, it's set up a local uh, or any offline authorization, I must call it offline and not local. So, and you can see it's now going to be valid for the next 30 days and really that's the time I last actually logged in. We can extend that to a long-term authorization. So if you've got a PC, which is obviously in your studio and it might be that you only ever connect that PC to the internet every six months or a year, this is what this long-term authorization is. By clicking on that, you're going to give yourself like a year. But to be perfectly honest, um, I'm going to be very happy just using the 30 days because tomorrow when I log in, it's going to update it. If I log in again six hours later after that, it will update it. So it's always being updated uh, for the next 30 days plus the time. So because it's a rolling update, you know, we, we don't have Reason servers down for 30 days on the trot. I think the longest I've seen a Reason server down was when it went down from a Saturday night to a Monday morning. Um, and to be honest, the servers are quite solid. They did go through a very, very dodgy patch, um, probably about, oh, it's probably a good six months to a year ago now, and I think they've actually got a lot better again since. However, this will actually resolve that issue, a bit like you saw at the beginning. It won't matter if the servers are down or not, to be honest, you won't know. In a way, you could say, oh, they're actually hiding it because you really won't know. But hang on a second, most of us are musicians. We don't really care. We just want to use Reason. And this is what this is really about. Now, there is obviously a subtle difference if you, if you, have, if you have a desktop and say a laptop, what a lot of people do. And if you think about it, there's no way we can do what we used to call our local authentication. But don't panic. The thought of that as well. So I'm just going to uh, zoom out very quickly and just going to grab something here and pull this over. Oh, and I'm just going to move my screen around. Let's, let's pull this up here and we're going to pull this in here. Now, what you're actually looking at is my laptop. So I've got, this is actually running on a laptop via um, a remote desktop. And as you can see, I'm actually logged in and there's different times. So I can now, whereas before we used to say, hey, we're gonna make this machine, our desktop, um, that we can obviously log in via the internet and our laptop, we'd want to run local authentication because we don't know if we have internet connection or not. Well, now it doesn't matter. My laptop, I just log in and if I'm on the internet, it's gonna log in on the internet. If I don't have the internet, it's gonna log in um, offline and vice versa. And we can actually have a third PC as well. So you can have up to three um, PCs, uh, devices, uh, that you can actually log into Reason. You're no longer limited. And I haven't actually checked the, the URL 
um, but I'm assuming they've actually updated because they're allowing you to actually do this for up to three times. Uh, because obviously in the past, even though there were ways we could actually get Reason installed onto like, or running four times from one account, you was only legally allowed to run it once. Um, that's how it sort of worked. But now it looks like we can actually run up to sort of three sessions. So this is really, really handy. This is really great for um, me. Because uh, I, I do have issues sometimes with Reason, especially Reason 12, that when I go to close it down, that X is still bubbling away in the background. You look at the applications and the applications have actually disappeared. And, and obviously the application is not actually up on the desktop, but it's actually there in the details. And if I go into my laptop and try and log in, I can get that horrible error message saying, hey, I'm actually already logged in. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. I'd have to go and go and kill off the XC so I can come over. So, hey, that's all a thing of the past. So I think this is actually great. Now, um, as I said, some people might say, hey, I've got a PC where um, um, it's a shared PC and you may wish to actually log out. So, okay, so what you can do at the end of the session is under file here. And let me see if I can zoom back into this bit here as well. You've got exit and log out. So exit and log out will obviously remove the internet um, password stuff. So you have to re-enter that, but it also removes the offline authentication. So if you're thinking, oh, I can actually remove part of it and not the other. No, it doesn't work like that. It'd be both. And if you actually stop to think about it for a moment, that makes perfect sense. Um, why would you want to leave one without the other? Because if someone else could come along and unplug your PC and then use it offline, you're not really sort of um, stopping anything. So yeah, it's there one way or the other. And I do think it's good. And as I said, code meter's gone now, so we don't have to worry about that code meter stuff. Um, and hopefully going forward, as, uh, then probably and hopefully the next step they're gonna do um, is probably give us normal users something like um, companion or something so i believe that's a, a good way of actually updating your rack extensions in the background because i do actually have an issue myself that now on the web page i've got like 15 pages i have to go to through to find my updates and i can't and i believe companion will actually move any sort of updates that you've got towards the top and hopefully pick and choose a lot easier what you want installed. Because there's a lot of stuff people don't want to come down to. The sync call works well for me, but I know a lot of people don't. I know they, they say, no, I'm never gonna use that rack extension. I just wanna remove it. If they could obviously tick on an option within their user accounts, they would probably just remove it altogether. But that's the way it is. Um, very, very quickly, um, obviously, the other big thing which came down with 12.6 is for the Mac users. I'm a Windows user, but I'd read there's a lot of issues where people are losing VSTs, and that's for two reasons. One is, yeah, and I'm, I am smiling a little bit to myself here, yet you wanted reason to give you native or Apple Silicon um, reason. They've done that, and now you're missing some VSTs because you've got to go and complain to their manufacturers to, to get their VSTs up to date. So you are ending up having to go backwards. And the other thing to look out for is obviously, if you've come from a slightly down version, is we've got these new options at the top. And so if I was to quickly scroll down here, uh, you could see, probably not a great option. Here we go, this one probably good, and Tour is quite a good one as well. As you can see, I've only got VST3s, so I've only got VST, and even I've got that selected. As soon as I click on duplicates and we come down to the same area, you can start seeing both of them now. Do, 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 do. So it could be that you've got duplicates off, so they are actually installed, you just can't see them. So if you open up an old project, they're still load up, they're just being filtered out. That's all this is, it's just pure filtering. So everything's still installed, they just filter it out. So, hey, you want to be picking VST3s going forward, because obviously at some stage then VST2s may be depreciated altogether and you won't have them anymore in your system. Um, so that's going to be quite an awkward one, especially with older projects. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, and very, very quickly, I know I've said this many, many times in the past, because I know someone's probably going to pick up and go, way, why don't I do my thumbnails for every single instrument? I don't. I only do thumbnails for instruments I've actually used heavily or in a, in a particular track. So there's, as you can see, there's a lot of instruments here I have not used in tracks. So I only really do pick out instruments I've actually used in tracks and give them a thumbnail. So they've earned that right to have a thumbnail. And when I'm coming through and browsing, I might go, oh, look, I have never used this 
VST, either I should remove it or maybe I should make good use of it and do something with it. Anyway, all I can say is uh, thank you for watching and bye for now.